Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Stellaris. Newbie tutorial series for version 2.7.2 .2 of the game. I'm your host, Carlos Fade. It's episode 22. It's year 2425. We're inching closer to the end game crisis. And at the same time, we're also preparing to go get ourselves involved in another little war over here. I would like to attack these fools. The Thek Clack collective they are a hive mind and i'd like to vassalize them and we also just started the vassalization of the sovereign lechak domains which is going to be huge they have a lot of a lot of space here and a lot of uh planets and i feel like we're still going to need to push our empire sprawl up so that's going to be important to do that here on the emerald planet Oh yeah, they have food processing facilities. Let's add that because they have a lot of food going on. So we still have a lot of a lot of work to do. We got our ring worlds though are now up and running, which is great. Uh, ring A has a bunch of people, a bunch of jobs available, and the uh, greater than ourselves is going to start moving. People, watch it. this one's ready to go in a day. Special great. Oh, gargantuan evolution. A closer analysis of the egg shards allows us to develop a technology that will reproduce some of the Boyd Spawn's eggs. Remarkable energy, retaining qualities of their own solar plants. Gargantuan evolution added. Research option gained. We can now colonize this. Habitable section B. So we go down here and find our peoples. Right there, the Nomad Empire. And we call this Ring B. And they'll do that, and now that means ring C. Get that section going, and I think, uh, yeah, we're still blocked. We got three going in because we got a ring world over here that's being done, and we still have down here this. Is it done now? The century ray? It's almost done 175 days. That's awesome. So it's almost there, and then we'll be able to do three ring pieces at a time, which will be fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna have to just buy some consumer goods pretty soon, I think. Research concluded. Research concluded. 1100 and 1150. So let's get energy weapon damage. We try to get those all caught up at the same time. Ozone X. This is one of our bureaucratic worlds that we very much are saying yes, please just get everybody sent here for jobs. Um, We'll probably need to take some of these mining districts and shuffle them over to cities for housing, but that's one of those worlds. Ring A, fantastic. Lots of jobs there. This unlocks a slot. And what is it missing? It's missing a... Oh, well, this is a... It's missing a consumer. It's missing this commercial zones. And then it's missing a... Galactic Stock Exchange. So. Vite, more bureaucracy as well. It also, it has a Galactic Stock Exchange and a commercial zone. Uh, it has a Batharian power plant, tech jobs. Uh, I think the thing to do here, it, it's missing an Autochthon mine, that's what it's missing. We're going to go in here and raise these up, create a bunch of jobs. We want people to take these as well. So, take those jobs. We need all those bureaucracy jobs. This habitat says, hey, put somebody over here. We're still trying to do refineries, even though now we're just basically buying most of what we need. Because you can see from here, we're buying quite a bit. Because we have the cash. So, this is becoming a stronghold world because this is also where we can recruit titans from on titan which i like that very much. the nomad man has one job available well, good for you and i've moved my fleet over here and what i'm gonna do is adjust this and say yeah i want to do this i want to be able to give this a titan and then it can choose four more well let's just grab a cruiser picket class cruiser and then tell it repair the fleet and reinforce the fleet and it should all be done here on the yep right there it's going to create that cruiser and the titan has to come from our 
mega shipyard because that's the only place I can make him right now. Actually, I think this shipyard up here can make him. Yeah, because we have a Colossus there as well to do it, but it's going to get made right here at the mega shipyard. You can see it's building the Titan and it's building the colony ship. And in fact, let's... Oh, the colony ship's almost out, so that's fine. And I would like to move my Colossus over here because I might want to use it one time against the Thet Clack. And that's where we're at. Century Array is concluded, which is awesome because then it means we can go in here and say, hey, ring section B, ring section B, complete that. Now, so it's working on ring section A, we can do ring section B, and we're working on ring section C on the one next door to it, and there it is. This is habitable section B is ready to go, so colonize this. And I thought we already did a ring B, but... Oh, what? Planet already has planned colony. Okay, never mind. We did. It's on its way. So that's great. And it's just continue to... And this gives you just so many... Um, this gives you so many people... So many jobs to move people to. So with greater than ourselves enacted. Unemployment. All those jobs. Not an issue. Track this on the map. Yeah, right there, and we're waiting for... This project is part of a wider scientific effort being conducted by members of our alliance. If they can manage to do it. The integration of our subject. You can always go on down here and check this. Um, and it'll tell you, integrating, it'll tell you when it's done. Progress is 60 out of 1468. Base progress is 5. Remaining time, 282 months. Research and that's how long it'll take for them to be integrated. So you want to pay attention to that because it can create quite a bit of lag. Energy credits from Dobbs, Gargantuan Evolution. Oh, nice. So that's the thing we got from that, from researching that creature. That's nice. So, I'm waiting for the Titan to come over here and join this fleet. So when this says 2.30, then I'm going to try to get my council to, to go to war with these bozos. Because, let's see, the Pan-Galactic Prospect, the Confederate Ajagawala Holdings, and uh, it should still be, are they still together? Yeah, they're still together with the Thet Clack, so. All right, that's done. Admin capacity. Just trying to blow this up as much as possible. You got to anticipate that integrating the subject like this, this is gonna, this is gonna cost a lot. So you got to do it. You got to be ready. Space amoebas. Space amoebas. And as far as victory conditions go, we're squashing everybody. Now there's a bunch of people ahead of the fallen empire, and the fallen empire is not anybody that we're concerned about um who are they actually <laughs> the, the rixie zealots yeah oh yeah these guys and they're they like us by plus 10 they're gonna hate us after we fire our colossus one time a lot of people are uh, and if we fire it about one time and then a whole bunch of people's gonna be really upset with us so if we fire it a second time everybody's gonna hate us but we could fire it one time it should be kind of fun because the Thet Clack are what? Let's look at them. They're a hive mind, and so they're organics. Yeah. <laughs> hive minded. Initial colonization phase. Rapid breeders. So what we really have to do is keep an eye down here to know where that, where that is. Yeah, and the Titan's got 550 days left. Before it's over there. And other than that, everything is pretty good in our empire. Oh, good. This got its first person up. So, robots. Robot assembly plants. 
this tech world it's not uh it's it's considered a tech world and i needed to change that don't i it needs to be a bureaucracy world but they don't have a colony designation for bureaucracy oh yes they do bureaucratic center bureaucratic job upkeep is reduced by 10 so that's a nice thing to be able to do i need bureaucratic planets this is a generator world because it's doing this but we could change it to bureaucratic but i always rather would rather have the bonus from more energy credits myself that's my own feeling about it generator world oh this is a generator world that's the wrong thing it needs to be a mining world i set that wrong a while ago mining world mining world here that kind of makes sense and then it's got all these refinery objects on it also needs a galactic stock exchange frontier sector this actually needs to be its own sector and let's give it a leader of some kind oh yeah and then anti-crime plus that heck yeah How big are our fleets? 132k. Still not great. But things are going to change dramatically very soon. When you get that. When you get that integration happening. And you get all of these guys pops and worlds and production and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's also going to kind of send that skyrocketing. And then if they have a bunch of unemployment, which they might, those people are going to immediately get shuffled off to our ring worlds, our research ring world, which will be pretty outstanding. So I like all of that. Habitat B over here it says hey I got more jobs what I really want to do is start adding more strongholds because getting this up and getting a fourth fleet right now would be really really good especially considering how close the end game crisis is coming so let's do another stronghold there in fact Research Hab C oh Research concluded. Energy weapon damage. Energy weapon damage and attack speed are now equal. Shields are lagging a little behind. Let's add some more shield power. The reason, a lot of times what I do is I just go straight offense on repeatables. And the reason for that is because it seems like whenever I decide to go repeatables for shields, I get one of the end game crises that ignore shields. Or if I decide to go a lot of repeatables with armor, I get one of the end game crises enemies that basically ignore armor so but offense offense always wins the best defense is a good offense so i typically do that um, and that's probably what i'll start doing here is start focusing more on just plain old offense 2200 empire sprawl now i like that almost 2300 i'm digging that that's getting us in a really good position to handle this integration. How is this guy going over here? Probably still a couple hundred days away from having that build yet. Um, let's check. Always check our mega shipyard. 316 days away from building that Titan. Let's see what it looks like. It's very cool. It's over here and it's like, hey, we're, uh, we can build stuff with this. Pretty cool. Pretty cool things that they do here in all these planets. Sometimes seeing these planets in that system like that. Just even seeing the planets. Gas giant. This makes me want to go back and play No Man's Sky. There's been some pretty significant changes since I played No Man's Sky last. And uh, I'd kind of like to go check it out again. I haven't played it in so long. And it's... Uh, Construction project concluded. It has its... No Man's Sky has its moments. I'm not going to say that it's a fantastic game, but it does have its moments. 
and and it can be you can lose yourself in hours playing that game especially if you're the kind of person who is self-directed like I am if you find out if you find an ideal planet that you want to build a really cool base on and you just want to even get the basics of a base up you can spend hours getting the resources and building everything and and building some automation into stuff and going from planet to planet and hopping and saying oh here's a really good here's a really good place to set up an automated mine for whatever kind of mineral you need or whatever and it, you can lose yourself in that game so much I, I need to throw some more of that on my channel because I really miss doing it it's, it's just a cool game um, council size to 4 we rejected that council size to 2 where is that right here it's creeping its way up the board we can't propose an emergency measure when the systems and they're, they're cur and that's currently on the senate floor is the Tianke conservation act so I would like to get us to where we are the senate by the end of the game but that might not happen <laughs> oh look and we're quite a bit behind the Rongo shipping alliance so before we go to a council size of one we need to we need to be better than him and what we can do is the so the sovereign lechax domains we don't need that anymore so we can start assigning some envoys here because we put a bunch of them at the sovereign lechax domains to make sure that they would like us and not rebel and uh, we can take all of those guys off the sovereign lechax domain we can, uh, we can add them so now we have four and that puts our diplomatic weight over them so if you throw enough envoys at it that's how you can make that happen. Then I can go back here and I can say, uh, let's see, call in some more favors. I still have a few more favors from people that I can use. And I can go get some more favors. Call in a favor. And now that's it's up next. It's up next. Great. So the Senate floor says, "Can we can we do enough to get it?" Hold on. What's on the Senate floor? The Tianke Conservation Act. We can't switch it once it's on the floor, can we? We can just make sure that it's next. That's all we can do. Okay. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And what's going on with our federation as far as experience goes? <laughs> We're halfway to level four, where we can then get to high, and then we can start to change some things like this succession type. Instead of challenge, we can go to strongest, and then it would be us, us. <laughs> We've lost two challenges. So it's not my favorite thing right now, the challenge aspect of it. These guys, are in breach of galactic law the dar the Dorbolan high kingdom is in breach of galactic law and they're taking a lot of penalties and so is the thet clack collective in breach of galactic law and we're going to go to war with them so i'm excited about going i'm excited about getting to start a war here's here's my luck and i'll explain this to all the newbies out there it's the year 2427 this is the beginning of the end game and the crisis is going to show up sometime in the next 50 or 60 years. Now, sometimes it doesn't even show up until right before the year 2500. I mean, it just depends. But this is my luck. My luck is if I don't start a war and I'm not engaged in any wars, it'll wait all the way till the year like 2499 before the end game crisis shows up. But if I start a war, boom. There it is. I'll start a war at 2428 and the end game crisis will show up at, at 2430. It's two years later it'll show up. And it's like, oh man, come on. I wanted to have, I, th I thought I had a couple 20 years here to Research go concluded. do a war, but the end game crisis is like, nope, mm -mm, not happening, buddy. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. Mega Shipyard says, 35 days for the Titan, so then it'll take a little bit of time to transit over to your fleet. This is something that 
they changed in the 2.6 or 2.7 version of the game prior to that one. Two point, the game versions basically went 2.2, 2.6, 2.7. I don't know what happened to 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. They kind of like skipped right over all of those. It basically went straight from 2.2 to 2.6. And 2.6 did not live very long because there were so many bugs. So that's how we arrived at 2.7. And... What used to happen is when you did that, you, when you reinforced a fleet, you would start to see all these little ships flying through here, making their way to the ship over here. And if they ran into enemies along the way, those enemies would blow them up. Which I didn't mind because I think you're a moron if, you're, if you just let the ship over here get built and your fleet's way over here. But enough people griped and so what they now do is they make it basically do the same thing that a research vessel does when it goes into experimental subspace navigation and then there it is it just showed up there's the titan and it's going to merge with my fleet so um, i know i didn't mind the old way but you know how gamers are they complain and and uh, if they complain loud enough the squeaky wheel gets the the oil can so these guys are moving, 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 moving. Let's see, can we see the Titan by itself? Yep, here he comes. Look at this thing. I'm going to pause it for a second. Oh, yeah, baby. It's like, I'm right in there. I'm going to slide right in there. Okay, so he's ready. Well, then let's do this. Let's see if we can... Um, the Thek Clack Collective is who I want to go to war with. And I'm going to communicate with them, and I'm going to say... Demand Tribute. And they're going to say no. And that's going to give us a diplomatic response from them. We will not tolerate extortion. We can demand that they become our tributary. If they accept, we will protect them, but they will have to pay us 25% of their mineral energy outcome. Or we could just go for vassalization war. Make them a vassal. So we can declare war. Total War Colossus, immensely powerful weapons lost to enforce our will upon our enemies. I don't really want to do that. I want to do, I want to make them a vassal as well. I want their space later. So I'm going to declare war. We're going to see if it passes. War declaration. And we're going to vote yes. War declaration. Yes. The United Information Alliance Pan Galactic Prosperity Sphere War began while you had fleets inside your new enemy's borders. <laughs> Really? Where? What fleets? Where? Oh, it doesn't matter. I don't think they know what they were talking about. Oh, maybe it was... No, I don't know what they were talking about because we got these guys here. So this is what I care about. We're going to move these guys right in here. So that war started. And then we're going to say, hey, you, you get over here to right there. And you, you're our third fleet. You should make your way down to here. Initial colonization phase. A change of heart. As our expansion on Ring A has stabilized, certain individuals have begun to move away from our view of the world. A group of spiritualists has begun to peacefully propagate against our government. They see that our materialistic view of the cosmos is limiting us, distancing us from the soul. They are no threat to our pursuits. Happiness for 25 years and spiritual ethics attraction 100 for 20 years. Um, bribe their leaders. No pops converted to the new ethic and it only costs us 100 energy and, and 100 minerals. Yes. Good. I like that. That, that works. So, we're going to start our war here. This would be fantastic. And what I'd like to do is over here at the mega shipyard is start a third fleet. We have enough space here, so I'm going to do I'm going to create 10 Corvettes and then I'm going to go into the fleet designer and design the rest of the fleet once we get them. So this would be great. And I'm not interested in conquering these guys. I want my... I want these troops to go right in there. This is the Obedin Sanctro Sink, so we'll wait a little bit. Let's see where all my fleets end up. What are you guys doing? Going right through there. Okay. 
Well, good job, dudes. Nice. Go in there. You, oh, you, th day. you three can go freedom. way up in here. Because we have to get up into the Thet Clack. That's the big thing. So in order to get to the Thet Clack, we kind of got to move through these guys. And that means you folk should come in here. We're going to need you to land on some things. Shield hit points. Let's go back to energy weapon. Attack speed and damage. And our allies were like, heck yeah, we'll go to war. We're ready for that. Let's see about ring worlds here. How are we doing? Oh, who did we lose? We lost a scientist. Okay, so no scientist. We have this person who has, he's busy, busy commanding the ship and his research speed in biology is 15. And he's also got some additional research speed there. And since he has levels, he's the person I want to take over. And that means we lose a person commanding a science ship. Where is that science ship? Where is it? That one, he has no orders. What's he doing? He's at no mod. Oh, I don't want you in no mod. Why don't you move? Yeah, to Mang. This is Richard. So this is the one that doesn't... That one's in subspace thing. Oh, this is the one. Lost a leader. Okay, let's get another leader and start getting them research speed plus five, research speed plus five. That's great. That basically makes them a genius. And we can tell them to come over here and start researching, assisting research there. These guys are here. Research ring world. Decisions. Tell them to make some jobs. And then, where's ring section C? It's got these coming. Can we do anything about this? Nope, because we're at our limit. Okay. All right, that's what I wanted to know. Happy about all of that, you guys. Crank in here. Cut right to the chase there. Oh, yes. Love it. Rolling in here. What do we have? So the Obadan Sancrosync Assembly. They like us and they're part of the United Information Alliance because they're us. Okay, that's the important thing. That's what I wanted to know. I've got so many people in my alliance and my federation now that I've <coughs> kind of lost track of all of them. And there's the fourth fleet. It's ready to now... Let's go in and design for it. We have one more, or two more Titans we can add. So we're going to add a Titan to it. And then I'm going to add a bunch of cruiser picket ships. I want at least 10 of those things because we have a lot. This, for some reason, this game, a lot of enemies have been using uh, those weapons against us. I want to get a bunch of these. Been using a lot of missiles against us. And that gets us to that much. Okay. And just load the rest of it up with Corvettes. Alright. So do this. Reinforced fleet for 41,000. Bingo. Excellent. So now that'll keep the mega structure, mega shipyard busy. Doing all of that. This trade hub over here, let's do trade protection. You need one hangar bay, at least, preferably two. Upgrade. Off-road training company. All that trade should be going. And it is. It's going directly. It's shooting directly down the home. Well, this is what your home world should look like. Trade. It's got all these gateways now. This is what ga this is why gateways are awesome. And how are we looking at these guys? What's going on here? They just sent a 24k fleet in here. And our fleet was like, eh. Having none of it. These guys. Oh, commander. And now we're going to go kill these guys. Look at this. Oh, heck yeah. All the Corvettes that were out ahead of time. Boo, swarm. 
The big guns firing. Oh my goodness. Sounds nasty. That's a big weapon. Off our Titan, that was awesome. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love stuff like that. It's so cool. Okay. Uh, let's do this. I just need to go like this. Dink, dink, dink. Oh, we can't go past that until he does that. Okay. Because of the faster than light inhibitor. Alright, you. Down here. You, gentlemen, over here. It's a bit of a storm going on there. Yeah, great. The shipyard, you can see the mega shipyard is busy building stuff. That's awesome. That is awesome. Habitat says, hey. Want to give us some more jobs? Yes. Start out with those. Because those can provide a lot of jobs. Alright. There you go. Now you're there. Let's go right there. You gentlemen, come here and take over one of theirs. This is Relash. Let's see how many armies they got. 103, so that should be an easy little fight for you. Oh, and we have Ambition Architectural Renaissance. Oh, we got to turn our ambitions back on. All right, so Will to Power, Architectural Renaissance. Turn it on. Oh, and we haven't turned on any of this stuff. Crystalline Sensors. We should always do this. Gases, fuel, focusing crystals for energy weapons. Always turn those on. Give yourself every advantage possible. We'll go conquer the thick lack. We're at 1% compared to 36%. Oh, and what, what other war are we now part of here? What is this war? Let's A click on it. Of war has been the Omni Fabricators. And the Obed and Sacrosanct Assembly. Oh, so they, um, this is going to be a robot uprising right here. Omni Fabricators. Yeah, they get a robot uprising because they didn't take care of their robots correctly. Machine uprising. So now since they're part of our federation, and the Tzatziki and Star Admission Administration has one as well. So now we're embroiled in three wars. So, of course, it wasn't an endgame crisis that came crashing down on me because I decided to start a war. Instead, it was the robot uprising. So, of course. <laughs> That's what happens when you get to the end game year. That's what happens to me anyway. I don't know. Everybody else should tell me what happens to you, but this is what happens to me. That I get into this last this last end game century and the game says, Hey, hey, guess what I'm gonna do to you? <laughs> it's like really? It's just kinda shocking. It's kinda funny, but it's kinda shocking. Right, perfect. We like to see that. Okay. Well, maybe we can get out of this war. Maybe we can vassalize these guys really fast. And then it'll be over. That one's done. Great. Come down here. And let's do clack. Let's go for Clack. How many how many warriors do we have in Clack? 413. So one of the things you can do, newbies, is if you get in here and you don't have enough guys to take over their garrison, let's say you only had 200 troops, then you can send your ships to orbitally bombard this, and it'll do all kinds of devastation and damage to the planet and knock their garrison down until their numbers are low enough that you can finally take that from them. Um, that's That's one way to do it. Otherwise, you can just make sure that your army is gigantic and also take Station care of it that way. Sustaining damage. Station sustaining damage where? Are we talking because of Omni Fabricators over here? or what? Oh, it's right there. Okay. Well, how big is this? 206. It's just waiting for the biggest stuff to be built. So we might as well send that fleet over there and help. Evasion, sublight, speed, ship. Oh, this is great. He's got two of the things I really like to have. Fantastic. Okay, your job is to come over here then, and uh, the Omni Fabricators are are uh, taking some of our space over here. 
Oh, the Great Tempest. Yay. Okay, and then you can crush that fleet, so go do it. So the Great Tempest. Scientists from the Glow Swahini Star League managed to restore functionality to the Elgate with their territory, beating us to it. Unfortunately, this seems to have triggered an invasion of our galaxy by the cluster's inhabitants. Aggressive nanomachines that attack everything in sight. Glosperhini scientists managed to shut down their gate before the invasion force arrived, but this only diverted them to the other L gates in the galaxy that are now fully active. All attempts to communicate with these invading nanites have failed. In the wake of their passage through the L gates, we have detected a repeating wideband subspace transmission emanating from the L cluster. Put the message on screen. Decoding repeating automated subspace transmission. Established translation matrix. Message is heavily corrupted. Tempting. Okay, access fragment one. We are blah, 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 architects of the Galactic Gateway Network. If you are receiving this transmission, then we can only blink that we are not too late. Perhaps one of our message buoys somehow slipped past the blank and escaped the cluster before it was closed off. Do not repeat. Do not restore access to the dormant gateway in our star cluster. Oops, too late. In an act that will inevitably doom our civilization, we have deliberately isolated our home cluster to prevent the spread of the Nardi Shav, the Grey Tempest. These self-replicating nanomachines were instrumental in the construction of our gateway network, but when they're unintelligible had concluded, we found that they would no longer accept our commands. Through a hidden back door, they managed to recall the machines to our home cluster, but this security hole has since been plugged. When they started harvesting our planets for materials, we knew it was only a matter of time before the main facility is the key. All there routed through its subspace array. Yes, yeah. So the N... So in addition now to two machine uprisings and a war that I started, we have the Great Tempest to uh, contend with. So this is this is the end game. This is what I love. Let me let me pause this video real quick. This is what I love about Stellaris. And I say that with all affection. I mean I can't I can't say it any more strongly. This is what Galactic Civilizations 3 lacked. It just got more boring as the end game came. And it sucked. Um in Galactic Civilizations 3, which was really my first space 4X game that I've ever played, I, I totally missed out on Masters of Orion way back in the day. A decade and a half ago, two decades ago. I missed out on it. I never played it. So Galactic Civilization 3 was my first introduction to space 4X, and I really liked it initially. But the problem is, once you beat your first enemy, you then were basically twice as powerful as everybody else because you got all their planets and all their resources. And then you just kind of steamrolled from there. And there was never anything like the Great Tempest and Machine Uprisings and Endgame Crisis and all those kinds of things. There was never any of that to spice up the Endgame and, and make sure that the Endgame difficulty was ramping up with your progress through the game. Stellaris is so much better. You start the game weak, but everybody's weak. And then as you gain power, new threats emerge. We had the determined exterminators close to us who wanted to go to war with us. And then we had the Great Khan. And then we decided to initiate a war of our own. And now we're, we're vassalizing and we're integrating these guys over here. And now here comes machine uprisings and the Great Tempest. And we have this war going on. And we're still not even to the endgame crisis yet. And the Fallen Empire might turn on us. So there's this whole lot going on here that I love about this game. And this is just, this is the best. This is why Stellaris is so good at what it does. Because it, it does this. Um, I think it's fantastic. And so what's cool is, I wonder, well, yeah, my, my Colossus is no good for fighting these machine uprisings. Uh, but I'm not too concerned about that. I want to get this... This first war out of the way, and I know how I'll do that. Um, we're going to offer them uh, the status quo because they'll accept it, and that should vassalize everything once we've once we've made sure to capture all of their planets, which we're just about done with this one, and then we'll be able to focus on the machine uprising. No general to this series. So that one's done, which is great. So you guys were fantabulous. Love you. Good job, warriors. Okay, let's go down here and get the last planet that they have. And I want to make sure that I've only seen three planets from them. So the Thet Clack Collective, they have four. 
They have Clack, Ogo, and the Wanjog system. Wanjog. Where is that at? Where's the Wanjog system? Wanjog. Where's that? Oh, it's right there. So we got to go get that one. Okay, see, it's good to always check those things. So we're going to send this guy over here to do that. Oh, he's got to go here first. We're going to come down here. And uh, get Wanjog, and then we'll offer them the status quo. And and what should happen is, since we've conquered all four of their planets, they should just become our vassal, and there shouldn't be any rebels of any kind. Um, this guy's up here doing this. This is great. Come over here. Boom. Take these guys out. Commencing planetary incursion. There's the Gray Tempest right there, because here is an Elgate right here, at that black hole. So, and the and the Gray Tempest are never too difficult. They're, uh, see, you can see they're 30,000. At this stage of the game, they're, they're a pushover. But, but a lot of times, people unlock them too early, and they're running around with 15 and 20k fleets, and the Great Tempest swarms them with 30k fleets, and they're like, oops. So, uh, that fleet is right there. Okay, good job. Doing its thing. Okay, I want you to come down here. Do this. Take that. Uh, you move up here. I'm going to move concluded. My Colossus. Actually, I could move the Colossus over here and fire at one time. I don't. We'll see who gets over there first: the Colossus or my troops. And I also should probably check and see how the Sovereign Lachaks are doing. Integration is still a long way off, so we don't have to worry about that yet. Uh, and so you do this, do that, come back here. I don't know that we need to worry too much about you getting those systems, but probably better off to send you over here to fight these robots. That's okay. Uh, why don't you go here? Mining station offline. Okay, that's done. Let's see. Can you get over here? Let's see what happens. I want to fire this one time because I want you newbies to be able to see it. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so this habit this is ready to go. We need to colonize this, this ring world. So I'm gonna call this Um Ring AA because it's on the other ring world over here, and then we can go to ring section B and it's almost done. We can go to ring section C and say, Do that one. So the Colossus is gonna is gonna get there. No, 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 you gotta go here, and I want you to go here and I want to fire this thing. So let's go right there. Oh, no, that's the juggernaut. Never mind. Darn it, where's the Colossus? Oh, it's on its way. Okay. We're going to fire that Colossus off, I think. Well, what do we have here? It's that Clack Collective. Oh, well. You, you have a new job. Come back here and take care of these guys. All right, a little edit going on. I had to deal with phone calls. I hate unsolicited garbage. All right, so those guys are taking care of that. That's good. I do want to fire this thing off, so I'm going to get him over there, um, even though my troops are there. And let's see. Uh, what do we want to do here? Are you guys going to go take these guys, or do we need to go do that job because you don't want to? What I should do... Let's see about this. Can you guys... Hmm. How far can you jump? Can you jump over to there? Because that would be awesome. If you could. Um, let's go around there. Oh my gosh, there's a ton of systems here. Holy cow, they've got like... These all have to be habitats. They are, you can see them. Where is the actual planet? Wow. There's a planet up here. Is this a planet or is it a habitat? 
orbital habitat. That's like all habitats. Oh, good lord. Oh my goodness. Here's a planet. Land our armies there <laughs> real quick. Uh, why don't you go up here? We'll get this last planet cleared off, though, with the Colossus, and then we'll be able to offer them what I want to offer them, which is... An end to hostilities and they will be my vassal. Oh yeah, baby. 134k, we're just in there rolling around. Rolling around, causing a ruckus. Okay. Do this. Commencing planetary incursion initiative. Actually, why don't you go there first? Because this guy, when he gets done, is going to be able to do that and that. So, uh, You head over here. All right, the Colossus is showing up. Perfect. We're going to send the Colossus over here. We're going to tell him to do this. Bathe Ogo. He's going to bathe that in radiation and kill... Planetary incursion initiative successful. Kill the... Uh, the enemy. Let's go wipe their people out. We'll take a look at that because it's really, really neat looking... Uh, effect. I want this guy to come over here. Research concluded. So, where is he? He's still not there yet. He's he's going to show up soon. Research concluded. Great. Kinetic weapon. Attack speed and damage. Keep doing those. So here he comes. Death. He's got the skull. He's like, oh, yeah. He's going to charge his weapon. And we're going to watch reputation for everybody. Take Research a complete concluded. tank here. The ones I'm concerned about are the zealots. That, it could be a big mistake messing with those guys. 27%. This is a really neat thing to watch, though. Trappist. Planetary incursion initiative successful. Excellent. Good job. Fifty percent charging the weapon. The Colossus. I'm not worried about any of my fleets Initial right now. Colonization phase. This Commencing. might be the thing to do is to take a look here and see what's going on. Third fleet. Second fleet, third fleet, fourth fleet, everybody's looking good, so that's good. You can see your overlord charging over here. As long as none of my fleets are in, in, embroiled in a, in a fight and getting their butts kicked. These guys are going to come watch. They're like, no way, really? Is he going to do it? 92%. They're sending, what are they saying? Oh, they're going to help bombard it. They're bombarding it. It's like, dudes. Oh my goodness. And so then it's fine. Now they're out. They're like, he's firing the weapon. Get away. How awesome is this? Pretty cool. Preparing to neutron bombard Ogo. And there we go. The ISS Overlord's neutron plume peters out, having finished its sweep of Ogo surface scans. Report no signs of sapient life. Plant life while damage may recover in time. Some would call the total annihilation of intelligent life while preserving inanimate matter a perverse war crime. We would call it efficient. Ogo was purged of all higher forms of life by the neutron sweep of our Colossus. So now that we've done that, let's go over here and say, Oh, hey, we can achieve our war goals now. <laughs> let's send the offer. <laughs> Chaos. Yes, victory against the Thet Clack Collective. The best possible outcome. They are now our vassals. So, how do you like them apples? <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Okay, you guys, gentlemen, come over here and help with this. What we need to do is land our armies. What is this, NAF? 
Yeah, go and land our armies and get rid of all these robots. Quite the bit of awesomeness that was. Unfortunately, it's completely useless against these robots. You need a world cracker there, but I don't want to do that. Oh, that was beautiful. Beautiful war put together perfectly. What do we have over here? Supporters, change count size to two. It's a 201 to 109,000. Yes, please. Session is 140. This is going to change it so that we can... It's going to change it so that we can rule. <laughs> I like that. There's Research a migration record. treaty broken between the sovereign Lechak's domains. Um, let's see how they... Oh, look, the Thet Clack really hate us. Omni Fabricators hate us. The Sovereign Lechaks are, are going to be integrated here in time. And that one's done. Receiving transmission. So we can, we can just uh, go grab all these really quick. Receiving transmission. Consa Confederated Jaguala Holdings. Form Commercial Pact. Okay. Like, we see the tide. We see the way things are turning here. We know that this is really bad. I'm just going to watch our, our fleet go from one place to the other because these guys don't have any defenders. Commencing planetary incursion initiative. Receiving transmission. Land armies. A research agreement. I'll say, okay, that's fine. And then uh, give me a science ship and tell them research that project. Faction founded. Gentlemen, land. Please. Oh, they're doing it. Good. So there they go. And then this guy's really close right there. Refugees arrive. And rising unemployment. That's fine. Commencing planetary Because they're not really our planets, so. You guys. And that clears that off, so that's great. So now we're going to go over here. And we're going to grab that one. Unless they get their armies to them first. Which it looks like they're going to. So what I'm going to do then is send my armies to here. And grab this one. And then uh, I want the, this to go here. And I want you to go there as well. And this is Bythia, which is now ours. And so all these planets are ours. All these habitats. Or whether the planets are habitats. Their habitats? No, these are really special habitats. Wow. Oh, but they're going to be purged. So, yeah, let's just let them purge before we have to worry about anything. Rising unemployment. I don't care about that. It's not important. Bythia Station, which is uh, a bunch of that. And we can say, you should be going to... Vite. So, go here. Actually, you should just go, let's see. Go straight to Nomad, because you'll go up through there. Yep, right there. So, we may end up with some habitats um, out of this mess. So there's the first fleet we need to start thinking about oh and let's see how the Rexy Zealots felt about us using that thing oh they're still at plus 10 so we used it the one the Colossus the one time and they're like no that's okay that's alright we're not going to be too upset about that that's cool so habitable section at C can we colonize this or did we already and it's on its way there we go yep so this is ring C and then down on ring B, we should be able to say, let's see, ring B is over here. I set this up as a research ring world. Um, 
I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to do it as a... Uh, yeah, what's this do? Commercial ring route. Trade value. Bureaucratic. Research. Agriculture. Nope. Let's do it as a commercial ring route. What I'm going to do is change these. I'm going to replace these with commercial segments. These create tons and tons of consumer goods, which gets this minus 394 thing taken care of. In the meantime, let's put some important things on there, like robot assemblies, clone vats, and uh, get you your first autochthon monument on it, and then raise that up. Ring A says, hey, I've, I've got the same kind of thing. Clone vats, raise that up. Talk on monument. I think what I want to do is put lots of strongholds on these things, on these ring worlds. Shipwreck study, fascinating. Uh, ring A A is currently being built. Ring section C doing its thing. Planetary incursion initiative. End of the Omni fabricators. They're all gone. So, dun dun dun, they're done, but over here, colony gained. We gained Naf um Jabal blah, blah blah. We gained all these because the Bivom system. So, we did gain these, and we are going to have to take care of them. So, I think what I want to do is rename these. I'm going to call it um, <laughs> not Nab. <laughs> I'm going to call it. A, B, C, D, E, Hab, E, E, and then uh, Hab, F, F, I know it's not, it's not sexy naming scheme, yes, extend our contract, please, it's not a sexy naming scheme, but, oh, and this is the planet, Naf, Abla, but the actual system is called Bythia, so that's what we're going to name it. And then over here, have GG. Okay, so we'll take care of those. There's some research we're gonna reassign here. Kinetic weapon damage. So on Bythia, what's the population like? Oh, and there's a bunch of people on it. Good. So we'll hang on to it no matter what. All right, that's great. This is what exotic gas refineries. Well, I'm probably gonna change that. But for right now, let's just add things instead of taking stuff away. Um, Fortress World. That's what I want to do for right now. Actually, I might just do it as a agro world. Let's focus this on food. Bythia. Let's just do food for now. And food and um, military. Actually, war would be better. I want fortresses on there, so. And this station here. Research concluded. So. Research concluded in the middle of all this. We still got all this going on. Uh, and yeah, we acquire more stuff, consumer goods. Taking it in the shorts, I'm not too worried about it, though. Because what's going to happen very soon is that when this ring world gets, uh, uh, not that, the other ring world, ring C, I think it is over here. One of these, one of these ring worlds. Habitable section. Have we colonized that? I think somebody's on the way. One of these. I actually need to remember which one it is. This one, commercial segment. We're going to get people here. Oh, and we need to do... Uh, there's going to be... On these ring worlds, there can be, get to be so many people on them that you absolutely have to put precinct houses on them and, and deal with that. I'm going to do the commercial segment first. A lot of people are going to get these jobs, and that will, that will switch that almost overnight. And all of a sudden, there will be a flurry of, of that bonus. And then, let's see... Let's take a look at we picked up a couple of extra stations here Bivum station which is downgrade I don't want that I don't want to be over my limit and then where is the oh but there's a bunch of there's a bunch of trade that needs to be collected from there this here's what we should do 
this station, downgrade this, cancel this, downgrade this, agree, and what we're going to do is build a station, one, two, one, two, we're going to build one right here, and it's going to collect trade from everywhere else, everywhere close by, and it's going to send it through the gate over here at Vite. In the meantime, we have this L gate, you can go to the L gate, you can see the L gate cluster, there's ships everywhere. Uh, that's a lot of ships actually and if we go in there we'll want to take all of our fleets with us so I think another getting, day, another scientific I think getting all of our fleets uh, over here to do this would be good so let's get everybody up there all of our fleets and the juggernaut because we'll need it to repair ships and then uh, the Colossus we'll put right there. And that's going to be... We're getting close to the end of the episode here. And we lost our physics person. So what do we have? We don't have physics. Let's check and see if we do. And we don't have one there either. So the best we can do is... This person has research speed of plus 5 and plus 5. And really, he's like having a genius. So we're going to assign him to that. And that's going to make this science ship lose somebody. So we can go in here and pick somebody else. Either lifespan, and I'll move discovery chance. We'll grab that person. And where was that ship at? Right there. So go assist ring A with research. This other science ship, he's got no orders. Uh, let's put him over here at this ring A and assist research with that. Actually, you know what? We're going to need you for uh, this. We're going to need him for the Great Tempest. It's the only way to explore that, really. The Thet Clack Collective insult us. Okay, so here's what we can do about that. We don't want them as our vassal to rebel against us. So we communicate. We could say improve relations and we could say United Information Alliance. I'm gonna I'm gonna assign a couple of these guys who were assigned to our Federation to them. And also, they are what? They're just I meant reptilian thet clack. We go into species and say thet clack. Where are they? Are they are they not showing up here because they're our vassals? So we don't actually have any in our empire. So we can't do anything as far as chemical bliss or anything. Uh, ring A. A, A. So we're going to do research on this one. Decisions. Here. Do that. This scientific revolution came off. So we'll turn it back on. Like that. And we will get ready to go through the gate. We need everybody over there. Oh, also, what we need is... I need this science ship to first survey that. I need one of these construction ships to come over here and build a star base there. We need to, we need to gather that. Um, our ships... I want our ships... Uh, Let's get the rest of you guys moved up there, one away. And where is our third, where is this first fleet? Right there. Okay, come over here. We're all going to get you all repaired and ready to go with our Juggernaut. And then we'll go take on the Great Tempest. You can see what they look like. This is why you don't want to, you don't want to tackle this before you're ready. <laughs> you can see they all have about 32,000. They're all exactly the same. And we can get a good look at what their, their fleets are like. They have an equal amount of armor and shields. And they use a whole ton of fighters. So that's on the mothership. And over here, same thing. And these do 100% armor damage and they do very bad shields. So good for us for having lots of shields on their ship. We could completely refit our ships. But I don't think we're going to need to. I think we're just going to be able to walk in there and, and storm the castle. So I'm not concerned about that at all. Construction project concluded. Not concern. Over here. This is kind of a 
Jack of all trades world. Actually, you know what would make the most sense? I mean, I don't need the food, but I'd love to just keep putting food on it. Let's let's do refineries then. And I think that's a good enough place to stop. This has been entertaining. I'm really excited to see that ring world flip over and watch uh, all those jobs fill up on ring B commercial segment so it's already got one and uh, we can look at the jobs see what do they have artisans 0 5 so what you can do is go in here and say um, the jobs that are important to me are artisans and that'll switch it over and that'll prioritize it so every new person who takes a job We'll take an artisan job first. And at the end of the month, when this rolls over, we'll see this number adjust. So adjust it a little bit. It's going to adjust a lot more as these get done. And that'll be... And so you don't have to turn all your ring worlds into research segments. It's nice. It certainly boosts it. You can see we're up to 10K now. Um, I like doing that. I like trying to use my ring worlds to do mostly research, but whenever we can get other things. And I'm going to stop selling so many of these because we clearly need them more to build now. And we have plenty of money. So I'm buy some, in fact, so I can start building. So next episode, we'll do some building. But what we're going to be doing is coming in here and getting ready to take this on. Um, I'm going to repair my ships with the Juggernaut here. I'm going to tell the Juggernaut reinforce my fleets. And then where's my fourth fleet? That's what I need to know. I need to know about my fourth fleet. Where are they? They're right here. And third fleet. Third fleet's way over here by themselves. Get over here, boys. We're going to need all of you. So that'll make for a fun next episode when we go in there. Um, I was really hoping to get this whole entire series done, including the, the end game crisis before... Saturday because I wanted to upload them all at one time and I have been busy uploading these getting them ready to do one gigantic release on a Saturday so any newbies can go through this they can binge watch this if they want to uh, obviously nobody's going to binge watch 25 or 30 hours in a row but I thought it would be better to just put it all out there at once so a newbie could because what I'm going to do is go back to my old newbie tutorials and and put a graphic up on them that says go here for the new version for 2.7 you don't want to watch this anymore especially because i've got a lot of complaints over the over the years about that first newbie tutorial let's play for 2.2 because the audio wasn't very good the game was really loud compared to my voice and, the, and that complaint is just rife on those pages and i hate it and so i don't want anybody to watch those anymore i want them to come here and watch this episode watch this series but anyway cranking it all out there on, on a day is going to be really cool senate's in recess did we get did we get that uh yeah council size changed the two so that's awesome it's been changed to two there's weak support for it to change to one <laughs> but we will want to do that this resolution cannot be proposed for another 1800 days uh so we may be the senate before it's over which would also be pretty fantastic thank you everybody for watching newbies we're going to stop it here in the year 2434 as always oh and let's check one thing before we go newbies um new players let's check it sovereign lechax we are remaining time 212 months to, for, for integration so as always, folks, if you dig the episode, give it a thumbs up. If you have a question or a comment, drop it down below. If you like the channel, subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, my Patreon is listed in the description below. And be sure to check out my dedicated Stellaris tutorials for tutorials for war, ships, planetary management, and trade. They're also listed in the description below. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.